This sophisticated table contains the all-important genetic code, utilised by both amateurs in science class and experts determining the genetic basis of a disease. What exactly is the genetic code? I like to think of the genetic code as a language, a structured method of communication between protein synthesis machinery. Each nucleotide base, adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine, or uracil, are like letters, A, G, C, T or U. These four letters can be ordered in various ways to spell out three letter words called codons. A gene is therefore a great long sentence with many words stringed together to encode a protein. But it took many decades and many great scientists to get to this point. Let's step back in time to where it all began. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed the double helical structure of DNA, suggesting the four bases, seeming to be randomly assigned, somehow directed the ordering of amino acids in protein synthesis. Over the next few years, it was clear that a previously disregarded, short-lived RNA molecule had a remarkably similar composition to its DNA origin. This was thought to be responsible for amino acid incorporation and termed messenger RNA or mRNA. But how was the mRNA sequence read, and did it actually direct amino acid incorporation? This is what Marshall Nirenberg and Heinrich Mathe set out to discover in 1961, the year the genetic code was born. E. coli cells were crushed, centrifuged and purified to obtain a cell-free supernatant containing DNA, RNA, ribosomes, ATP and organelles, which were then mixed with the radio-labelled amino acids and an RNA template. It was found that incorporation of all amino acids increased significantly in the presence of added RNA and was inhibited by RNAs, further supporting the previous theory that mRNA is responsible for amino acid incorporation. Nuremberg and Mathieu's most exciting findings came when they added synthetic RNA polynucleotides and examined the corresponding amino acid incorporation. Imagine there are 20 different types of cars in a parking lot, each representing an amino acid. Each car requires a certain combination of components in its fuel to successfully function and drive to work, in other words, to incorporate into the protein. From the first experiment, we know the fuel must contain RNA, ribosomes, ATP, organelles. However, there is a missing ingredient that determines which car can drive. When adding polyuridylic acid, RNA containing only uracil, Phenylalanine incorporated into the protein at a great rate of around 38,000 counts per minute per microgram of protein. However, adding polyuridylic acid to the other radio-labeled amino acids resulted in incorporation generally less than 100 counts per minute per microgram of protein. This suggested that uracil, whether it be a pair, triplet or quadruplet of uracil bases, was specific to phenylalanine incorporation. In other words, the same fuel could not make any other cars drive to work. They then tested whether replacing polyuridylic acid with other polynucleotides, such as a cytosine polymer, could direct this incorporation, all resulting in less than 60 counts of phenylalanine per minute per microgram of protein. In other words, the same car was unable to drive to work with other fuels. Ultimately, Nuremberg and Mathe confirmed the importance of mRNA in directing amino acid assembly and discovered the first relationship between a set of bases and an amino acid. Shortly after, Crick and his team discovered the triplet nature of the genetic code, as only the removal or addition of triplets produced functioning proteins in the T4 bacteriophage. The triplet nature meant there was a total of 64 possible codon sequences, encoding the 20 amino acids. Nuremberg could now confirm they had found the first codon, UUU, encoding phenylalanine, and further utilised this technique to discover codons AAA and CCC encode amino acids lysine and proline respectively. These foundations, set by the tiresome work of Nuremberg and Mathe, allowed Philip Letter and Ha Gobind Korana, among other esteemed scientists, to decipher the remaining codons in their amino acids. Using techniques such as mini-mRNA sequences and copolymers with repeating di-, tri- and tetranucleotide patterns, all 64 codons for the 20 amino acids had been discovered by 1966, and the mystery of the genetic code had been solved. Without Nirenberg and Mathe's keystone discovery, the mechanisms behind the four bases encoding specific proteins could still be an enigma, and modern advances such as CRISPR technology or identifying the cause of Duchenne muscle atrophy could not have been possible.